Arsenal have made it 10 games unbeaten with a 5-star performance. Mikel Arteta's men made a statement. But what was a new tactic in the Arsenal attack? Who is Mikel Arteta's hidden gem? What is happening with Thomas Partey? And how is the Arsenal squad evolving? As per, let's break it all down and discuss the 5 things we learned from Arsenal 5, Sheffield United nil. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Babs14, welcome back to Boys Channel and I know you guys are doing sensational. So how can you not be a 5 star performance from Mikel Arteta as Arsenal? As per, smash a like on the video if you enjoy, subscribe to the channel if you are new and help your boy on his road to 200,000 subscribers. We're starting off with Eddie's Masterclass. Arsenal had a forward dilemma going into this game. Gabriel Jesus out and unavailable. Mikel Arteta said before the game for Jesus the scan show there's a muscle injury and we might lose him for a few weeks again. Who was going to cause the trouble? Enter the room Eddie Inketia. A 9.4 performance. The highest out of any Arsenal player so far this season. A hat-trick from an XG of 1.01. .01. 14 out of 20 accurate passes and 4 out of 8 ground rules won. Here he was after the game with Yuri and Timber, providing in the match ball after a fantastic hat trick. Nketiah scores his first Premier League hat trick and is the first Englishman to do so in the competition for Arsenal since Steele Walker against West Brom in May 2015. Eddie says it's amazing, it's not been easy. Last month I lost my auntie, so I want to dedicate these goals to her. Her family were here watching, so it's a really special moment. There was something very important about this Eddie performance. The first goal showcased composure, a lovely pass from Declan Rice. Then Ketty's magic makes that goal happen, to take the ball away from Austin Trusty and place it into the back of the net. And that for me showed me something. It was one of the first times we've seen this season, Eddie have a clear-cut chance at the Emirates Stadium. He may not be Erling Haaland, but I will say one thing, Arsenal have not been making as many chances for Eddie. For us to see his true goal-scoring potential, it's all about confidence. The second goal was an example of a striker's instinct. No thinking, just smashing into the back of the net. But it's that third goal that we have to give a proper breakdown for. Unleashing his inner Thierry Henry, living up to the number 14. The prime example of why confidence is a game changer. Strikers are all about rhythm. Once they start scoring, they start to rely on their instincts. Nketiah has now scored five league goals in nine Premier League starts, seven in 13 in total. That's not mentioning that he's also won a few penalties. One thing I like about him is his character. Without Gabriel Jesus and the questions being asked, to score a hat-trick that wonderful, to remind Arsenal fans of his quality, there's one thing that Eddie needs to add to his game now. It's called consistency. With Jesus out for a few weeks, here he was at the Emirates Stadium applauding Eddie. This is now Nketiah's prime opportunity. Show the Arsenal fans now of why they need to believe more in you. We also need to talk about your underrated forward performance. We are talking about Gabriel Martinelli with a 7.8 rating. In 66 minutes, it was a 0.3 expected assist. 3 out of 3 dribbles, 35 out of 36 passes, 3 key passes, 2 out of 2 long balls, 6 out of 9 ground doors. Martinelli is Arsenal's outlet. On the left hand side, his job is to cause chaos. And here's the example of him doing that. In terms of all the Arsenal players on the pitch, Martinelli was the highest in terms of goal probability added, even over the likes of Eddie Nketiah. Now Mikel Arteta has a mission. Can he find Gabriel Martinelli a partner in midfield? Because on that left hand side we've seen so many changes. From Havertz to Declan Rice and now a Mill Smith row. I'm looking at the likes of Fabio Vieira, providing Martinelli a combination on the left hand side. But what about the right hand side? Bukayo Saka put up a 7.4 performance, with 24 accurate passes, 1 key pass and 3 ground duels won. There's something that we need to highlight. The fact that he was the Arsenal captain of the day. Here he was before the game. Given the Arsenal players a team talk at 22 years of age, Bukayo says I don't really know how to describe it. You know me and you know where I've come from, the academy. To be at the front leading the boys out today was just unbelievable. I'm lost for words. It's hard to describe this feeling. It's just amazing. Arsenal fans should be very excited and here's why. Look at Bukayo Saka's performance as a captain, mainly the game against Chelsea. The fact that he grew so much with the armband on, took control of the game and made the assist for the equaliser. That was Saka showing that he is a leader in the making. But he wasn't the only Heywen captain. Given the armband to Nketi at the end of the game, this was a beautiful moment. Two players out of Heywen, Arsenal through and through. This will be inspirational. Think about all the Arsenal young boys coming through right now. The quality of Ethan Wanier and Miles Lewis Skelly. Arsenal have given them examples. If you work hard enough and make things happen, Arsenal will give you a chance to shine. Moving on to the second thing, attacking balance. There was something very telling about this game. Arsenal have now gone 13 years without losing to a promoted side at home in the Premier League. We're talking 32 wins, 5 draws and 0 defeats. 
extending their run to 37 games, Mikel Arteta made a very important change. A lineup without Martin Odegaard and Gabriel Magalhaes. As Arteta said before the game, Martin has been carrying a little thing that he wasn't very comfortable in games. We have the players that have enormous quality. We have to trust in them. It was time to shine for Kai Havertz and Emil Smith-Rowe. There was a clear idea behind this. Smith-Rowe offering a combination on the left-hand side. Havertz offering Saka movement, making space with intelligent runs, the Arsenal attack and more balance. And here was the final product, a 2.77 XG to Sheffield United 0.02. Look at these stats here, Arsenal with 67% of the ball, 603 passes completed, 64 final third entries and a 4.6 expected threat created. As shown by the field tilts, Arsenal were supreme winners with 79% in total, odds to control for most of the game. That is where we were asked a different question, how are you going to break down the opposition? That's where Arsenal turned to a very important performance. We're talking Alexander Zinchenko with a 7.6 rating, 90 minutes played, 1 interception, 2 tackles and 0 times forward pass. Focus on the on the ball quality, 102 touches, 79 accurate passes and 94% accuracy, 1 key pass and 4 out of 4 long balls, as well as 1 big chance created. The reason why Zinchenko was so important was on the ball bravery. Whenever on the ball he was trying to break the lines, Arteta had found his ball progressor. As shown by the stats here, Zinchenko was the highest Arsenal player on the day, in terms of expected threat created, through only his passing. Zinchenko was offering Arsenal a solution. The amount of times this year teams block off the middle, Arsenal had been forced out wide. That's where things changed in this game. The likes of Rice Zinchenko being more brave meant that Arsenal could finally access the central part of the pitch. There was something very unique about this game. Arsenal scoring 5 goals, and not a single assist or goal from Saka Martinelli, Jesus or Odegaard. An example that Arsenal have multiple goal threats. So let's talk about Emil Smith Rowe. His first Arsenal start since May 2022. After 530 days, Smith Rowe put up a 7.2 performance with one assist, 25 accurate passes, and one key pass. There's one specific aspect that I want to focus on it's Smith Rowe's positioning. Despite being comfortable on the left hand side, for me, he's more suited to the right hand side, closer to a certain Bukayo Saka. These two have a deadly combination, and we've seen it time and time again. The example in this game was obvious, right towards the end of the first half. Saka moved over the left hand side, and you could straight away see the natural gravitation. These two have chemistry, they're always looking to find each other. That's what we need to talk about a certain Kai Havertz. A 6.7 rating in total, Havertz put up 47 touches, 32 accurate passes and one key pass. With one big chance miss, two ground duels won and three aerial duels won. Havertz is more comfortable on the right hand side, because he's able to create better angles. The issue is not that he's doing anything wrong, it's more a question of what is he adding. The fact that Arsenal spent £65 million on him means that Arsenal fans want a little bit more. They want to see that something special that Mikel Arteta sees. Havertz needs to find a way to become more braver, risk taking in the final third and trying to make things happen. Moving on to the third thing, Arteta's hidden gems. There was a surprise in the Arsenal defence, with Gabriel Magalhaes rested on the Arsenal bench. In came the forgotten man, Jakob Kivio, with a 7.2 performance keeping a clean sheet in 90 minutes played, 5 clearances in total, 0 times you would pass. Look at the on the ball quality of 90 touches, 75 passes completed, 6 out of 10 long balls. Kivio offers also something very important, it's called technical empathy. Passing is not just accuracy, but it's also about the weight of the pass. Can you make it easier for the other player to receive the ball, to allow also to create more rhythm? What Kivio has is the perfect zip in his passing, and that creates tempo. He may not be the defensive monster of Gabriel Magalhaes, but do not underestimate his reading of the game. Arsenal here are trying to be ahead of the curve. Look at the current game of top left footed centre backs. Arsenal already have one in Gabriel Magalhaes. Kivio as a part of the next crop. But what about the performance of a certain Declan Rice? A 7.3 rating playing as a number 6. In 89 minutes played, Rice got one assist, a lovely pass to Eddie Nketiah. 80 touches, 67 accurate passes, and 94% accuracy. One big chance created. Two ground was won. Rice's game is clearly evolving. First, you are seeing authority, the ability of Rice to take the ball and make things happen. The prime example being the assist for the first goal. That was a Kevin De Bruyne esque pass. Rice has now got three goal contributions in three games. You can't forget about his offensive game, especially in terms of transition control. With Rice's ability to eat up ground, teams are finding it harder and harder to counter attack, which is a main reason why Arsenal being able to sustain pressure higher this season. Rice fully understands what he's here for. As he said before the game, when I signed for Arsenal, they had not won a Premier League or Champions League for so long, so I came here and I wanted to be those type of players that can make an impact, 
like Virgil van Dijk did at Liverpool, spurring the team on to go and win big things. But what's the latest on a certain Thomas Partey? Well, Mikel Arteta said before the game, Partey has got another muscle injury. We expect him to be out for a few weeks. Let me give you guys a telling stat. Partey has made 104 Arsenal appearances in his career so far, but has also missed 51 games for injury since his arrival in October 2020. This is why Mikel Arteta has signed Declan Rice. Unfortunately, Partey is not reliable fitness-wise. Rice is the opposite, having started all 10 league games so far this season, and all three in the Champions League. There was also an underrated performance in the Arsenal goal. Let's look at the stats of David Raya. A 7.0 rating, keeping another clean sheet. Three high claims, 29 touches, 21 accurate passes, and three out of six accurate long balls. For me, there was one standout moment. In that first half from a Sheffield United free kick, Raya is aggressive off his line, claims the ball and straight away, fires up water Gabriel Martinelli. He may not be perfect, but he's clearly got the ability to play long balls, only when he's offered outlets. There's a reason why his numbers always get higher when he's given targets like Havertz and Martinelli. Raya has now kept four clean sheets in the league this season, having only played seven games, the joint most in the league alongside Palace and Spurs. For all of his mistakes, there's no denying there's been impact. The future of Ramsdale is getting interesting. According to reports in the UK, Arsenal will not allow our Ramsdale to leave the club in January, despite becoming our test second choice keeper after David Raya's arrival. Ramsdale is now in a very important moment, a real test of mental character. Legendary Arsenal manager Arsene Wenger says, I would not give up because I believe he has a chance to come back into the team. Moving on to the fourth thing, impact subs. Let's talk about Mikel Arteta's subs. The first one being Fabio Vieira with a 7.6 rating, 17 minutes, one goal scored, five accurate passes and one accurate cross, as well as one penalty one. Here's why I want to give praise to a certain Eddie Nketiah, who says that I was on the penalty. I was going to take it, but Fabio, it was a special moment for him. I think he's expecting a baby and he won the penalty. He asked if I can take it and I said, of course, it's a team sport. I've got three, so why not? The important thing for me was position. Vieira thriving on the left-hand side of midfield. Not for the first time this season, that shows to me. Out of all the players that Mikel Arteta has tried there, Vieira is definitely the most comfortable. On that left wing though, there was a very impressive cameo. Leandro Trossard off the bench was moving like Neymar. Step overs and skills left, right and centre. There's a reason why Arsenal fans are so excited about Trossard. It's all about ideas. Every time he's on the pitch, you can see what he's trying to do. With three goals off the bench this season, think about how important those were. An equaliser against Man City in the Community Shield. An equaliser against Chelsea. A winner against Everton. We've also got to talk about a very special moment. Sakehiro Tomiyasu off the bench and a 7.7 .7 rating. In 24 minutes played, 29 touches, 21 out of 22 passes and 3 out of 3 long balls. Tomiyasu also scored his first ever Arsenal goal. And look at the way he celebrated. The smile and the roar on his face. As he says after the game, finally my first goal for Arsenal, thank you guys. This goal is for my mum who passed away last year. As fans, we only see these guys as players on the pitch, but we can't forget the human aspects. Tommy Asu fully deserved this beautiful moment. Now I've got a very important stat. With Tommy Asu and Vieira scoring off the bench, Arsenal have now had seven goals from subs this season, the most in the Premier League. Moving on to the fifth thing, squad evolution. Arsenal are now 10 league games unbeaten, with seven wins and three draws. They have moved up to second place in the Premier League. Above Man City and goal scored, two points behind first place Nando's FC. The best part about this game was rotation. Without Jesus and Partey, Odegaard and Gabriel rested, Arsenal were still able to score five goals and smash a Premier League side. This shows us evolution. The Arsenal squad depth has gotten so much better. Able to call upon game changers like Trossard, turn to the likes of Kivior, Mikel Arteta is showing signs of learning, giving each Arsenal play the right amount of minutes so that when we're in the real tough parts of the season, Arsenal will have a fully capable squad. Let's talk about a title race though. With Man City smashing Man United 3-0, Liverpool doing likewise on Ungham Forest. There's also another team that unfortunately we have to talk about. Tottenham Hotspur who beat Crystal Palace two goals to one. Remaining top of the Premier League. Here's why I've got an important question. In terms of the title race this season, alongside City, who is the other team that gives you guys the most fear? For Arsenal, games are coming thick and fast. West Ham in the Carabao Cup this Wednesday. A chance to enter the quarterfinals. The next league game will be even more fascinating. Newcastle United away from home. And Mikel Arteta will have a very important dilemma. What is he going to do with the Arsenal captain Martin Odegaard? A game in which he scored a fantastic goal last season. That is the video there and there though. So if you have enjoyed, smash a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you want to follow your boy on all of his social medias, then the links are down below in the description. That was the five things we learned though from Arsenal 5, Sheffield United 0. Emphatic, sensational victory. It's things that you love to see. And now, West Hammer Wednesday, Declan Rice is about to make his return. I'll see you next time. Take care and have a bit.